So let's get started with Pilates. Let's get on our mats. If it's a hot, hot day for you, um, definitely stop and take water breaks as needed. The nice thing about doing hot Pilates is that I feel really flexible, <laughs> more so than when I do Pilates in the cold, cold winter. Inhale through the nose and exhale out through the mouth. So it's always good to take a moment to bring focus and center to your breathing, especially if you're just getting off your work day and your brain is still frazzled. Inhale through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. Try to sit as tall as possible. My knees are bent. I'm reaching up through the crown of my head. I'm keeping my shoulders down and relaxed away from those ears. If you're not sure if your shoulders are relaxed, go ahead and shrug them and then drop them. And then let's go ahead and take one more breath in and exhale, roll down. Nice and slowly. Continuing to breathe, inhale. And exhale. We're lying in neutral position right now. There's a small space under your lower back. A couple more breaths like this. And then shift into our imprinted lower back. As you exhale, allow the abdominals to draw down, engage and gently press that lower back into the mat. You'll feel your tailbone lift up. Inhale, return to neutral, tailbone on the floor. Exhale, imprint. Inhale, neutral. Exhale, imprint. One more time. Imprinting that lower back and hold on to it. Legs to tabletop. Checking for Shins parallel, knees 90 degrees. Exhale, lower one leg. Inhale, return. Exhale. I'm not transferring any weight to the toes. I'm not resting my leg on the floor. As soon as my toes gently make contact with the mats, I lift my leg back up. Again, using the abs to maintain imprint, you're going to feel increased work in the abs as your leg reaches away from your head. We're gonna to try to keep that 90 degree knee bend. We're just warming up here. So kind of creating that mind-body connection of recruiting the abdominals. You're also gonna feel quads and hip flexors. One more time on each side. Moving with your breath, exhale the lower, inhale to lift. Yeah, let's try lowering both legs. Now I have uh, my device set up to my side so that you can see my body. But feel free to put your device anywhere where you don't have to constantly crane your neck. So maybe a little closer towards your feet where you can just tuck your chin down and look. Exhale. When we're lowering both legs, you don't have to take the feet all the way to the floor. It depends on how your imprint is. If you feel like you're losing your imprint starting to arch in the back or feel any strain in the lower back, just go part ways down and then come back up. Part way down. Last one here. So let's warm up our obliques. You can take your hands to the side, press into the floor, or you can use your elbows and sort of press down to the floor, either way. Squeeze your knees together. Inhale, allow the knees to fall to one side, just halfway. Exhale, back to center. Inhale, halfway down to the other side. Shoulder blades stay firmly anchored to the mat, but your pelvis rotates. Or the lower half of your body rotates. It's okay if your knees come apart a little bit. So if you're trying both arm versions, I would say that when it's just your elbows or your upper arm, it's a little more challenging because you don't have as much arm length to anchor your shoulder blades. Having the arms all the way down to the side, pressing those hands to the floor, definitely feels a little more secure. 
in terms of assistance with anchoring the shoulder blades. Feel free to try both versions of arm positions, see which one you like better. I would say that you might feel a little bit more obliques with the bent elbow version. Exhale to center. Last time to the second side here. Okay, go ahead and drop your heels. Make sure your feet are hip distance apart as you place your feet down on the ground. Go into your shoulder bridge. So rolling up, lifting the hips, reaching those knees away from the shoulders. Here's your length, neutral position. So we're not going to an arch or hyperextended position. Inhale at the top, exhale, slowly roll down one vertebra at a time. This is your standard hip bridge. Inhale on the tailbone, exhale, lift the tailbone, imprint, Press through your heels, reach those knees away from the shoulders. Inhale at the top. Exhale, slowly roll down. Here we're testing for spine mobility. Do a couple more at your own pace. Inhale. Exhale. And last one here. Now we're moving into ab prep or ab crunch. So we're look towards your knees. Exhale to use your abs, lifting the head, neck, and shoulder blades. My eye gaze is right on my knees. Inhale, hold, exhale. Lower shoulder blades, lower head. Inhale, exhale, using your abdominals, lift head, neck, and shoulder blades. I know you have to use your neck to lift your head, and then you have to use your abs to lift your shoulder blades. Um, but the goal is once we have it lifted, our chin is tucked, hopefully your neck doesn't have to do much work. Now, the only time your neck has to do a lot of work is if you kept your eye gaze on the ceiling, like this. That's a lot of strain on the neck. So the more you can tuck your chin, the less work your neck has to do to hold your head up. Inhale here and exhale. The other thing you want to watch out for as you do your crunch, slow controlled, is that you're not shrugging your shoulders up to your ears. I am reaching my fingertips toward my toes, but I'm not elevating my shoulders. Let's do two more here. Inhale, exhale out through the mouth. Inhale, exhale, lower with control. And last one. From here, we're gonna move into our hundreds, which is pumping our arms a hundred times. So you can do that with your feet on the ground, legs and tabletop together, legs straight, vertical, legs straight, diagonal. Pick your leg position and let's pump. Inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, 10, inhale. And exhale, 20, inhale. Exhale, 30, inhale. Exhale, 40, inhale. Exhale, 50, good. Keep your eye gaze on your knees. 60, inhale. Feel free to change leg position if you need to during the hundreds. If your neck gets fatigued, you can place your head, neck, and shoulder blades back down. We're on 80, inhale. Exhale. Use the arms nice and straight. Keep reaching with the entire arms. Last 10. Five, four, three, two, one. It's a lot of endurance right there. And that concludes our abdominal warm up. And now we're going to warm up our spine. Using the forearms first to provide supports. We lift the head, neck, and upper part of the torso, keeping the chin once again slightly tucked. Exhale to lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale. Exhale. In. Couple more times. The goal here is to work on our postural muscles. 
to the muscles in the back side of our body, the muscles surrounding your spine. I'm gently pressing into my forearms here. Just try a few without the arms. Of course, feel free to keep the arms down if you need. This version, I'm reaching my fingertips toward my toes, squeezing my shoulder blades towards each other. And last one. Good, you're gonna take your hands underneath your shoulders and push yourself up and give yourself a little stretch. Onto the plank here. Elbows underneath the shoulders. Maybe your butt's a little high to start. Reach one heel to the back of the room. Really tuck your toe under, almost like you're stretching your calf. And then the other. We're gonna do a rocking plank here. So with your shoulders over the elbows, this is a good starting point. I'm gonna have you just scoot your toes back a couple inches so your shoulders are slightly behind your elbows. And then you're gonna to point to your toes, pushing into the balls of your feet to glide forward so your shoulders are over the elbows. Flex the foot, reach the heel to the back of the room, feel that calf stretch, abdominals engage as your shoulders move behind the elbows. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, rock back. We're trying to move in a forward and backwards manner. We don't want our butt going up and down. Inhale, forward. Exhale, rock back. This also gives you kind of a nice calf stretch. Squeeze not just your abs, but also your quads and your butt muscles. Find that strength and that straight line plank position. Two more. Inhale forward, exhale, rock back. Inhale and exhale. Good. Coming down. We come to a seated position. Hope you guys are pretty warm now. Neutral spine, flexed spine, coming halfway down. Inhale into neutral. So as you're sitting up, Feel like there's a stream pulling from the top of your head up to the ceiling. Good, and then draw your abdominals in, crunch, crunch, crunch. Feel the abdominal work. Shoulders stay down away from the ears. And this is your half rollback. This is the basic half rollback with our arms forward. Again, shoulders relax away from the ears. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, seeker. And add some leg straightening. So as I rock back, I'm going to straighten my front leg. It's okay if it doesn't go all the way straight. Feel those quadriceps engage. Bend it as you lengthen your spine. As you roll back, straighten the other leg. I would say this is the easier of the two versions. It's all challenging though. It's an easier, not easy. Okay, make sure those shoulders don't shrug up. Sometimes as things get more challenging, we tend to create tension in other places in our Okay, so keep the leg down, halfway back, roll back. As you come up, try to straighten the leg. A little more challenging. The leg won't go as high. Usually it's due to tightness. Bend the knee as you rock back. As you lengthen up, try to straighten the leg. Don't worry, you won't, might not be able to sit as vertically, and you might not lift the leg as high, but it's definitely more challenging. You can do either version, I'm just giving you options. Exhale here, inhale, 
exhale. You'll notice that I'm also not coming completely vertical just because I have tightness in my hamstring. I'm gonna roll all the way back and do our full roll up. Flex the feet, anchor those heels, heavy on the mats. We're gonna try the first roll up. If you find yourself getting stuck on the way up, I'll give you some options here. Inhale, arms. Actively reach the arms, use your abs. Keep reaching, 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 reaching. Stretch forward. Roll back. Take your time coming down. Now, if you find yourself getting stuck, bend your knees. Inhale, arms, head, shoulders. At the moment you feel you're stuck, I want you to shoot your legs out and see if that gives you a, a little momentum. I'm gonna give you a couple other options here. The goal is to practice getting up though, even if it requires momentum. So another way is one leg at a time, lift your leg up to the tabletop, arms, head, shoulders, put your shoulder blades up and then kick your leg straight. Good. And then on the way down, if you want to have a little more challenge, you can raise your arms higher. But it is about articulation and resisting gravity. Slowly, slowly, slowly coming down, keeping the heels on the mat. So if you're doing the single leg version, just keep alternating your legs. Inhale here, exhale. Let's do two more. And feel free to stay in this forward fold stretch. It should feel good. I actually uh, like to keep my feet flexed. Get a little more cash stretch. So two more here at your own pace. Inhale, arms, exhale. Use your abs to lift the spine up. Inhale, start to roll back. Again, if your arms are Closer to the ears as you roll down, it's gonna be more challenge to the abdominals. Try to roll down as slowly as you can. Good. Do one more. Okay. We're gonna go into Obliques first. So in our abdominal series, I usually start with a single leg stretch, which is a good thing to start with. Um, but then I find like sometimes it fatigues us. So I'm gonna do things in a little different order today. So if you lift your legs up to tabletop, we're gonna take the hands behind the head. So your neck is getting support. Whenever your hands behind the head, you are not gonna bring your elbows forward and yank on your head. It is they're just to take any strain out of your neck, all right? Because your head weighs eight to 10 pounds, right? Think of a bowling ball. And we are gonna support that. So before we even do the lift, I would like you to straighten the back leg out or one leg, it doesn't matter which. And you should already feel your abs nice and engaged with your imprint. So we're gonna lift to center. We're gonna exhale, turn towards the bent knee. We're gonna inhale to center. We're gonna to turn towards the bent knee again. And I'm gonna to come to center and now switch the legs. Go to the back knee. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center, hold, switch. Now, a couple options. You can put one knee down as you lift the other leg. So turn towards the front knee or the left knee back to center. Turn, center, switch. So I have one leg on the ground or option to have it on diagonal. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Switch legs. Exhale, twist. Both shoulder blades are off the ground. One is a little higher than the other. Switch legs. We're in center now. Last time. Two times to the back. Exhale. Inhale. Return legs to the ground. And now we will do single leg stretch. So single leg stretch, stretch one, stretch one at a time. All right, like this. If you wanna lift the head, neck and shoulders, you can. 
leg no high or leg no low. Now, does it have to look a very specific way? Like, do you have to touch your foot to your knee? Yeah, if you want, but it doesn't have to. You can have your leg coming to tabletop. As long as you're stretching one leg away and the other knee is bent, no rotation here. And I'm just kind of gently guiding my knees. This is single leg stretch. I stretch one leg out. You can stretch it high. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> having issues here. All right, we're gonna do double leg stretch. So this is single leg. What do you think double leg is? This. Let me show you the basic here. Head down, reach, return. Vertical, how's it feel? Don't forget, your quads and hip flexors are also working. Feel free to go with the open and shuts or open and return version. I'm gonna give you a variation here. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna lift my head, neck and shoulders and straighten my arms and legs to the ceiling. Your step one. Step two is I open my shoulder blades and head still to the ground. Step three is I return to vertical. Step four, I returned to the start position. This is a variation of double leg stretch. Exhale, reach high. Inhale, open. Exhale, reach high again. Inhale, return. Exhale, inhale. Now when you open, you can go as low as you'd like. I am not dictating that your feet need to go within six inches of the floor. You wanna maintain imprints. Imprint to lower back. Exhale, vertical, inhale. Any diagonal of your choosing, vertical and return. My return is tabletop. I'm not completely collapsing here. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Last one here. In variations of double leg stretch. All right. I'm gonna do basic scissors and then I'll show you a variation of it. Basic scissors, take one leg straight, the other leg away from your head and straight. This is like a hamstring stretch. All right, in fact, it feels really good. Inhale to switch, exhale. Inhale, switch, exhale. All right, so let me show you the variation. Feel free to go with this. I would say the variation is a little more complex in choreography than anything else. So we come to tabletop, head down. If your neck tends to get sore, you can take turns uh, alternating between head down, head up. So our head is down here and then I'm gonna crunch up into the scissor and I'm gonna lower back down to tabletop. I'm gonna exhale into a scissor the other way. So from tabletop, one leg goes up, one leg goes out. And if you want a lot more work on the abs, a lot more endurance, and your neck is okay, keep your head up. So reach here, return to tabletop. Scissor, tabletop, exhale, tabletop. My head, neck, and shoulder blades are staying off the ground. Tabletop, scissor. Good, and one more little challenge is we stop holding the leg. So arms here, like hundreds. Reach, tabletop, scissors. Remember you're alternating which leg goes up and which leg goes out. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Last time, last time. And relax. Flip all the, your abs deserve to be smashed into the mats. No, we're just, we're just stretching here. All right, so we have our W arms when our forearms are on the ground and you can lift them off the ground. You can form a T, which is to the side and a Y, which is more diagonally forward. So I'm just showing you that because it's sometimes hard to see here. When I lift my chest, head and neck, again, keeping my chin tucked, this is the W. And then I'm gonna reach to the T. I'm gonna pull back to the W and lower. 
See how that feels. Inhale, lift. We got our W. Let's try for the Y. A little more forward. Back, pull back into the W. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and lower down. So you can keep doing the T, you can keep doing the Y, or you can alternate. So I'm going to alternate. I'm going to lift, reach to the side, pull elbows back in. Maybe a little lift more of the chest and then lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, reach into the Y. Maybe a little lift as I pull the elbows back and up. And then release. T again. I'm keeping the tops of the feet on the mat for now. And then the Y. It's all about the spine, but because we're extending our arms at different angles, it creates sort of different challenges to our spine muscles. So last pairing here, that's the T. And the last Y here. All right, please push back and stretch. All right, we're gonna go into a plank again, this time on the wrist. Uh, one of the reasons I choose to do planks on the wrist is because it allows you to do some underneath the body movements. All right, so the wrists are underneath the shoulders. Go ahead and reach your heel to the back of the room. And then the other here, we are in our high plank. You always have the option to do it on your elbows and to hold the plank on your knees. I'm just giving variations, so we're not always doing the same kind of plank. All right, I'm gonna do a thread under. Actually, I'm gonna take my feet about hip distance apart. So here's my back leg. I'm gonna pull the knee under my body and I'm gonna follow, rotate sort of to the inside arch of my front foot and then thread my other leg through. Got it? And then I'm gonna pull it back, flip onto my toes and return. Take the front knee, rotate and reach under. Now you do have all your limbs on the floor for support. But the challenge is here when you take the leg off the ground, you haven't quite rotated yet, and then you rotate. There's a lot of ab work right here. Back leg, rotate, try to resist placing the foot on the ground right away. Bend the knee, unrotate. Let's just do one more time here, front leg, rotate, back, lift the leg. Not only are you working your abdominals, but your arms, shoulders, there's a lot of muscles being engaged when you are doing the uh, plank. Let's do our butt. Let's not do our butt. Let's work on our butt muscles. <laughs> I don't know what do your butt means. Okay, here is your shoulder bridge, which we have done from the warm up. No more articulation. So if you recall, articulation was you roll up one vertebra at a time and you roll it down one vertebra at a time. Push up, push down. Treat your spine as a very strong, stable, neutral unit. Up, down. Okay? So no more articulation. Uh, pick a leg, any leg. So I'm going to take my back leg. When I lift, with the remaining leg on the ground, both the right and left hip will come up to the same height. Oh, sorry, let me show you the exercise. So when I go up, no articulation, I'm gonna shoot my back leg straight. Now my toes pointing, I'm gonna flex the foot. I'm gonna start to lower it slowly. Really brace here, squeeze the butt. And when my knees are next to each other, I'm gonna slowly lower my butt. Keep everything engaged until like basically my whole leg comes to the ground. I'm gonna drag that same leg in, lift the same back leg, and then drive up and straighten. So this point and flex, circle down. Again, only when the knees are next to each other do you start to lower 
everything with control. It's kind of hard, but we're trying to get the butt and heel to like all hit the ground at the same time. But don't worry if your butt hits first and then the heel. Drag the heel in. Point the toe, legs, back leg to tabletop. We're staying at the back leg for a little while. Hike, hips up, flex, resist. Really squeeze those quadriceps up, keep the leg nice and straight. You're almost doing an upside down plank, right? Remember a plank is a straight line from shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles. So the back leg is creating the plank here. This is actually the fourth one. It's hard to count something when we're doing such slow reps. Resist the urge to start lowering your butt right away. You're gonna lower your butt when your knees are next to each other. Let's do two more. We'll do uh, six on each side. Lift. Oh, I hope you're breathing. We didn't really talk about this breathing yet. Um, the idea is that this is really slow lowering. So you're most likely gonna have to take an inhale and exhale as you're lowering. And I would say for the lift, I would exhale. So inhale here, exhale. So you're gonna start by inhaling here and most likely you're gonna to need to take another exhale to finish. Inhale when your butt's on the ground. So here, take your other exhale. Inhale when your butt's on the ground, dragging your leg in. Lift your leg last time, exhale. But again, keep alternating your breath. Make sure you're constantly breathing. You're, uh, your working leg, which is your front leg right now, should be pretty fatigued, quads and glutes. All right, let's switch. So front leg is up. That means your back leg is doing all the work now. Inhale to prepare, exhale, straighten. Right here, your quads are engaged, your hamstring might be feeling stretched. When you flex the foot, you should feel your calf get a little stretched too. Drag it down. Good, drag your heel in, leg to tabletop, front leg, reach. Really push through that foot, the heel on the ground. There's our second, we're gonna do six, so four more. At your own pace, slower the better. This is a good time to work on ankle mobility too. Right, so we're not just pointing and flexing our feet for fun. Point here, point, flex. Feel your anterior tibialis engage to flex the foot. Feel your calf stretch as you flex the foot. Uh, one more here, if I'm counting right. Of course, there's high probability I'm not counting right. Yeah, there's a lot of work. So right here, when your leg's vertical, going to diagonal, the fact that your endurance and holding the hips up at equal height the whole time, there's a lot of work going on in that foot on the ground, all right? I know we're focused so much on this moving leg, but it's really not that much about the moving leg. It's actually more about the, uh, the non-moving leg. All right, I'm gonna lay on your side, do a little bit of outer thigh work. If you can align, oh, sorry, align your body to the front edge of your mat, we're actually not gonna stay in our straight body position for too long. We're gonna get into our bent knee position. Um, so, but I wanna start from straight because it's important that we align ourselves to the mat. So head all the way down to the feet. Now, if you pull your knees forward, just your knees, so it's going toward the front edge of the mat, but your feet are still aligned with the rest of your body. So head, shoulders, hips, and feet. And your knees are roughly about 90 degrees. It could be a little more, a little less, but when you do the clamshell, when you separate your knees, keep your feet together, you should feel like you have pretty good range of motion, not leaning back. This is me falling back, all right? Keep your hips stacked, right hip over left hip, right shoulder over left shoulder. The movement is external rotation. 
kneecaps face forward, kneecaps face high diagonal. That's when you know it's rotation. Now we're going to lift the feet off the ground, about hip height, so it's really not higher than my hip, and we continue the rotation. Notice where your feet are in space. They uh, hopefully aren't moving too much in space, so not like this. Right, my feet are staying mostly still, so my knees open and closing. You don't really need your hand on the floor, I just don't know where to put my hand, so it is right there as a kickstand. Good, now see if you can keep the opening and push with your bottom leg to push the top leg almost out of the way. So it's, I know it's hard, but pretend your top leg is just really tired. It probably is. And so you need the bottom leg to do all the work to lift the bottom thigh off the ground. Here you're gonna feel a little bit more on the obliques. Exhale, lift, inhale, lift. All right, go ahead and return everything to the ground. This is neutral. So notice the kneecaps and toes are aligning each other and they face forward the whole time. So when I'm lifting both knees and feet at the same time, there's no external rotation. If you don't feel it doing it this way, you can pull your knees more forward like this so everyone's a little different. So be honest with yourself. If you don't feel the work, you gotta change your position. My front shin is aligned and parallel to the front edge of the mats. My thighs are perpendicular to the front edge. It's like I'm sitting in a chair, okay? That's what it's like if someone was looking from a bird's eye view. So if you don't feel it's in the original clamshell position, then just bring your legs forward. I, I do feel it more this way but I know not everyone does. So you can find the most painful way. Isn't that why you're here? Knees and sh uh, feet or shin, the entire shin lifts up and down, no higher than the hip. I know it's painful. We got one more thing to do. Hold the leg up, look at where your feet are. Actually, you can't really see your feet in real life. The only reason I can see my feet is I can see it in my Zoom screen. I'm going to make sure my foot doesn't move. And I'm going to do internal rotation. So my knee turns, my kneecap faces forward and then it faces down. Remember when my kneecap went up, that was external rotation. So internal external rotators, those are the names of the muscles, but not officially, not the Latin names, obviously. It's like saying quadriceps and hamstrings. Those aren't the official muscle names. Um, but anyways, we have internal and external rotators, and it's important that all of them are in balance. And these are all core muscles. They all attach to the pelvis. Anything that attaches to the pelvis and spine are your core muscles. This is why we're doing this in Pilates. Flip it. Oh, did I say that last exercise was the last exercise we're doing? Okay, this exercise is the last exercise we're doing. <laughs> oh my gosh, do you hate me already? External, internal, external, internal. Look at your shin bone. It's just going like this. Diagonal, diagonal, diagonal. All right, I've had enough of this. It's hurting so much. Come onto your back for a moment. That top leg that you just worked, just give it a good stretch. I'm gonna flip all the way around. Actually, you probably are gonna too, so that you can keep facing the front. Um, but if you want, you can face the back. We're gonna do everything we just did. There's a fly buzzing around here, and I just wanna kill it, but I'm gonna to have to wait until after class to wage war on that fly. Okay, right into the clamshell here. 
So if you recall, the line goes from ears, shoulders, hips, and feet. The knees are pulled forward out of the lineup. Knees are roughly about 90 degrees, but again, if you're too close, you'll find like your range is a little limited. And if your legs are too straight, oh, it's definitely gonna be limited. So you should be able to find about, I would say roughly 90 degrees is where you can have maximal external rotation. As we do this first exercise, it doesn't feel too bad yet. So here the focus is not on abs, but if you can just sort of draw your abs in and embrace, just to get in the habit of having braced abs, that's good. And then keep breathing, exhale, open, inhale, close. So this is your basic clamshell or focus is external rotation. Let's continue this motion with the feet at hip height. You think that your bottom leg would start to get tired, but because the bottom thigh is still on the ground, it's not going to feel that much work. But your top leg is doing more work because your foot is no longer resting on the mat or resting on the other foot, I should say. And you want to feel your muscles really get fatigued here. Hopefully you're not feeling sharp shooting, joint pain or anything. That's not the goal here. You just want muscle fatigue. And you know, of course, I'm not counting this at all. I'm just going until it hurts a lot. I always wondered if I ever watched my YouTube videos and I actually counted how many reps I did on each side, how off I would be. Okay, we're gonna keep it open and lift the entire diamond of our legs. Don't have to lift it high, just until the bottom thigh is off the ground or the bottom knee is off the ground. Use your kickstand hand, that's okay. Push into the floor a little bit. No matter how much more you push into the floor, it's, it's not gonna help the lower body that much. You're just gonna feel a little more anchored in the upper body. But there's just no way your hands up here is doing any of the work for the lower body. It just stabilizes. Okay, so we're going into the next exercise, which is the not external rotation. So keeping things in neutral. Um, I'm gonna pull my knees forward. So my spine is parallel to the edge of the mat. My shins are parallel to the edge of the mat. And if that's the case, then it means my thighs are perpendicular to the uh, long edges of the mat. I should clarify which edges I'm talking about because obviously there are short edges of a yoga mat. This exercise is just the worst. It just hurts right away. This does take some concentration though. I mean, sometimes like I just wanna lift my knee faster than my toes. So I really have to concentrate on lifting my feet or my foot, I should say, and my knee, keeping that shin parallel. Take some concentration. No need to rush through this. Okay, so what do we got next? Pull the top leg, where? Hip height. What are we gonna do with the knee? It's gonna come together. A little meeting of the knees. I'm doing my best to keep my foot my top foot in space, right? Because this is still internal rotation, but notice how I really kicked my foot up. It just kind of changes the exercise a little bit. Feel free to try it. Like if you really kind of move it, uh, I feel less muscle uh, engagements when I do too drastic of a move versus when I really focus on keeping the foot where it is in space.
And then the final version is the flip-flop from internal rotation to external rotation. And when the knee is at its highest, it's at hip height. And when my foot is at its highest, it's at hip height, more or less, I mean, within a couple inches. The point is it's not like this or like this. This is very, very obviously greater than hip height. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're not looking to go too much out of that range. All right, are we ready, about ready for the stretch? Okay, let's do the stretch. Oh. So we did a lot of abs in the beginning and uh, kind of ended more with some pelvis stabilizers and our outer thighs. But we got three minutes left, so I'm gonna do some teasers. Teasers are like roll-ups with your feet off the ground. So if you've been in my class before, feel free to start doing your favorite teaser variation. So if you haven't done a teaser before, similar to the roll-up, biceps by the ears, you can use a little momentum on the way up. Arms, head, shoulder blades come up, use your legs, kick it out, and then pull it back in. You want to find this balance on your tailbone. So knowing your body, how much you need to kick out in order to roll yourself up, and then how much you need to kick out so you can roll yourself down with control. All right? As you get more and more accustomed with teasers, you'll find that you can roll up more slowly with less momentum. All right? Again, if it's your first time doing teasers, don't be afraid to use the momentum. Kick your legs out. Use that weight shift of kicking your legs out, that momentum, to help get your torso up. And then you want to extend your legs before you roll back down. Timing's important. You got to lift the head, neck, and shoulders first. The neck and shoulders first, then extend the legs and crunch your abs at the same time. You need to extend your legs before you roll it back down. All right, otherwise you're just gonna fall down. You gotta counterbalance. That's what teases are, is a lot of physics. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, hold at the top, exhale, extend, roll down. Good, option to keep your legs straight. Inhale, head, neck, and shoulders up. Exhale, extend the legs. Inhale, hold, you can keep the legs straight, in which case you don't have to straighten your legs again as you roll down. Exhale. Let's do one more here. In, out, in, out. All right. Find a nice, comfortable seated position with your spine as straight as possible. You can be cross-legged. You can even be out in like a straddle split if you want. Um, you probably can't tell from the front, but you basically want to sit as tall as possible. If you're really flexible when your legs are in straddle, and then like you're basically doing this, you're doing a spine twist. All right. So I grab my opposite knee kind of pull a little bit with a straight spine. Try the other side. Back to center, up and over. So if your legs are in a straddle like this, you can go all the way over if you like. I remember doing this in gymnastics. And some of the girls would just be like, <laughs> like all the way down. I've never been flexible. Ugh. Crossing my legs in. This is a side bend. It's about this part of your body. It's not about touching a foot or something. All right. The goal of Pilates is about improving strength, flexibility, core strength, uh, strengthen your legs, but also about balance, alignment, and posture. So it's helpful to kind of remind yourself Pilates principles throughout the week. Like if you're at work or you're working from your desktop, like what 
you know, where are your shoulders? <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for coming. Let me know if you have any questions.